Hi folks, welcome to your world with Prakash Kapila. Today we have a very important uh, show for you. And uh, in this show, we're going to talk about, uh, again, um, a financial stock, I mean, a financial uh, implications uh, on a stock and how um, in one day, in one day, $35 billion have been vanished out of the market. In one day, $35 billion have been sold off in the market. That means they just sold it at a high um, uh, rate, whatever rate. I mean, you you name how much you want to buy, I'll give it to you. I'll give it to you like that. Fire sale happened. And the total amount of money of that fire sale on one particular day was $35 billion. $35 billion. And this happened on March 27th, uh, very recently. So uh, to give you a perspective, this is reminding us of the GameStop, where in one day, the um, whole company got bankrupt, like $10 billion worth of company. The, uh, there, there is one hedge fund company of $10 billion, and it, it just vanished. $10 billion vanished. Now this is $35 billion, so three times more, 3.5 uh, times more. So who are the players here? Uh, what happened and uh, how did this go about is what uh, we're going to um, look around, see, um, look around and come to grips with. Okay, so first thing first, um, there are, players, they're buyers and they're sellers. Stock market is only about buying and selling, okay? So now in this buying and selling, the company, there, there are so many um, players. And like uh, we watched the last time, the uh, billionaires and the millionaires club are segregated. So the billionaires club are the high net worth individuals, the high net worth companies, the four high net worth companies that uh, the prime brokerages are going to help them. So what is a prime brokerage? Prime brokerage is like a bank for hedge fund. See, when you want to buy a car, what do you do? You go to bank and you say, uh, you go to a dealer and you say, I want to buy so much. The dealer will ask the bank, okay, this guy, um, is uh, thinking of buying it? Can you think that he can buy or not? And then the bank says, okay, I will lend him, uh, lend that person this much money with this much interest, this much, so and so forth. So the bank is in between the buyer and the seller all the time. Whichever, whichever thing, uh, whatever you want to buy, there is a bank in between. So for a very high hedge fund companies, the banks are the prime brokerages. The prime brokerages have the strength of the market. They can, they manage the dark pools. They are part of those dark pools. They are part of uh, uh, different exchanges. They have the money, they have the investors, they have the wherewithal of uh, fulfilling the desires of uh, a very high hedge fund. So in all this setup, around say 2010 or eight, something like that, there was a law that was passed by the Congress that I don't re really remember the exact year, but the law says that a private companies need not give to the SEC the regular reporting. Uh, that other hedge funds and uh, financial companies have to do. So what will happen is that these, um, the thought behind that was these uh, small, uh, the private companies are small holding. They don't manage the money of others. They, they don't come into the ambit of profit making. They, they're more like managing the companies for long years, like 50 years, 60 years, like that. There are a few private com private uh, fund companies that do that. Say, for example, Ford Motor Company is the um, household of Ford, maybe one such uh, private uh, thing. 
or you know um, say tatas or uh, birlas or something like that so these there are few holding companies private companies that have a substantial stock uh, in a particular company and they uh, and they maintain it for long time so those kind of companies are exempted from the exempted means they don't have to give uh, the quarterly reports to all the ex, uh, to the securities and exchange commission so any stock that is uh, in uh, us right any stock that is trading in us has to um, is under the ambit of the sec so sec can ask for all the details and there are a lot of reports that these guys have to submit so archegos capital was founded by uh, bill wong uh, this bill wong was uh, part of the tiger management who is this tiger management tiger management is like al almost like warren buffett kind of thing where in span of 15 years they converted some 5 million dollars into 20 billion so in span of 15 years that's a humongous growth so 1 billion is 1000 million so for 5 million to go to 20 billion it's like uh, so many times you know 200 into 20 like 4000 yeah 4000 times or 5000 times the money has been multiplied in just um, 10 years 10 15 years so in the bill wong was managing the asia division Asia division of this tiger management. And he was charged with insider trading. Insider trading means a crime, a simple thing. It's a criminal offense to know about non-public information and trade on it. So by either bribing people who are in the uh, company or by um, not following the rules and regulations, you get some information uh, inside of the company because of your position or something, or you bribe someone. So all those things are considered as criminal. So Bill Wong, around 2012, 2012, he was uh, charged with uh, insider trading. So when someone gets charged with insider trading, that's it, game over. You are not supposed to interact with financial institutions. Your, no financial institution is going to, you know, support you or help you or do anything with you. So in span of like, he just waited for two more years and uh, started uh, the, the company called Archivos Capital. Uh, he, yeah, around uh, 2013 or something, he started Archivos Capital. The initial money of that capital was $200 million. $200 million was the initial capital of that company. So from uh, around 2021, the capital base of this company grew from 200 million to 10 billion. 200 million, 10 billion, this many times, it just rapidly made money. So how did it make money is a big question. Uh, and uh, most probably he, he was very smart. He did all smart things and whatnot. So there are a few um, uh, synthetic options that uh, this person has bought. What are this, uh, what is that synthetic option? Synthetic means something that's not real that's art synthetic means artificial right so what is this artificial option artificial option is you uh, for a option you are you need to have an asset okay whether you are buying a put you you saying put call or uh, between uh, both of them a butterfly or whatever so all those things require that you need a stock based on that so you have a stock and you are buying a Put, put means the stock is going to fall. 
call means the stock is going to rise. So you are you are either buying a put or a call or uh, verticals or butterflies or any of those things based on the stock that you have. So in synthetic stock, in a synthetic option, what happens is you don't have the stock. So what you are doing is what what the actual thing happened was it's called total return swap. What is this total return swap? Uh, there is a chart there. You can see that. So in that swap means exchange, right? Someone is exchanging something for something. I'm giving you something, and you have to give me something. So what is the total return swap? Total return swap is basically um, someone is saying to the bank that I'm going to give you this much uh, amount of money. In return, you give me the stock. Uh, the returns on the stock. So, what are the returns on the stock? It could be your stock split. It could be your um, increasing stock price. It could be your dividends. It could be uh, your uh, returns over a period of time. So, all the swaps. There is something called notional. Notional means uh, it, it, it is a <laughs> believe me or not, it is a imaginative number. As simple as that. So the uh, the imaginative number uh, for one swap would be one million. So if I buy two hundred stocks, it will be 200, 200 swaps. It will be like two hundred million. Is the notional. So swaps always go on a one million notional. Okay. In one million notional, the bank. See, there are four uh, banks. Uh, in this case, one is Credit Suisse. Second one, Nomura. Third one, Goldman Sachs. Morgan Stanley. These four are the big banks. And Wells Fargo. Wells Fargo will always be there. Wells Fargo, Credit Suisse, Nomura, uh, Goldman Sachs, and Morgan Stanley. These five banks have uh, become a prime broker for this particular uh, Archegos capital. What they said is, okay, each one of them interacted with this guy without knowing the other guy. I mean, it's market, right? Anybody can buy from anybody and all those. So that information is not known because these all these guys are prime brokers and they maintain a dark pool. So what is happening in dark pool? Who is buying and who is selling is not known. So with all these five... Uh, big banks, he traded with each one of them individually. And nobody knew how much uh, this Archegos capital was uh, leveraging. So leveraging means if I have one uh, unit, I can buy 20 units. Then the leverage is 1 is to 20. So imagine for $1 million, uh, how much uh, leverage would have happened? So divide 1 million by 20, then you got, say, um, yeah, 100,000 by 2, right? 100,000 by 2 is like 50,000. So for $50,000, you could actually trade on a $1 million stock. That, that is the leverage the Archegos Capital do. So with each of these banks, the leverage was very high. 10, 20 times the price. Total interest swap is based on an index. So what did the index have? Index means combination of stocks. So the index of Archegos Capital was Tencent, Baidu, um, GSX, IQYI. Uh, it's a whip shop, uh, vaping shop, I think. <laughs> and um, Viacom. The other one is uh, CBS, uh, CBS Ycom and uh, Baidu, Tencent, CBS Ycom. Um, I don't remember the other, um, other the US company name. So there are like five stocks, right? All these five stocks were part of the index. And this index was having the total return swap. So all the money that these stocks gives out, uh, if uh, the Archegos capital gets it. So in terms of dividends, in terms of um, returns, in, in terms of any, you know, uh, 
warrants, all those stuff, right? Wherever the money is given out to the shareholders, that money is uh, what the Archivos Capital got. So in span of just one year, in span of one year, almost all of these index stocks were doubled, more than doubled. Viacom and um, Tencent, Baidu, all of them are US shares. Viacom, Tencent, Baidu are all US shares. Whereas uh, IQII, which Big Shop and other uh, things were there in China. These Chinese tech stocks were also traded in US. So he, that, that's how he created an index out of it. And uh, the US company started giving the uh, total return swaps. So for total return swap, what happens is the company that is on the other side. So this is Archipos Capital, and this is another company, Prime Broker. So Prime Broker says, okay, I will buy for you those stocks and keep it with me and you pay me fixed price that fixed price uh, you give me some price based on say uh, LIBOR or based on say US 10 years say US 10 years is like 3% right? uh, uh, 1.7 uh, 1.7 percent all right so then uh, the uh, company could say hey give me double that out 1.7%, which is like 3.5%. So I'll give you $1 million for 3.5% interest is what it comes down. So this guy is that this guy is going to give that much for the company. So out of 1 million, you are giving 3.5%, which is like $35,000, right? Or if it, uh, yeah, 35,000 to 40,000. And uh, the company, what it says is, for these stocks that you have, we are going to uh, buy all these stocks and keep it with us and give you the dividends once these companies pay those dividends. So if the company, pay, uh, company pays those dividends like 20% or 10%, every company does that, right? So when the company pays those dividends, that this guy is going to get the dividends maybe 10% or 15% or if the stock prices increases by 100%, then the change of the money is given to uh, this guy. So with just 50, uh, with just uh, 35 or $40,000 he gives to the bank, he gets $1 million worth of the stock and all the money associated that one million. So how much uh, they have just doubled in just one year, they doubled. So when the stock was going up, this guy was getting money. Everything was hunky dory, everything was good. But in this uh, black uh, dark pool, this guy and this guy, all these guys were playing with the same um, person. So with all these people, they started, uh, he started negotiating. When the person is getting a lot of money, there will be other uh, parties that will try to insure you. Okay. Say uh, you are uh, having the debt for this guy. So in case uh, you pay us some insurance, something uh, wrong happens, we'll uh, pay the insurance. So therefore, there were two sides of the companies that were there. One side, on one side was uh, Goldman Sachs, Morgan Stanley. And the other side was Credit Suisse, Nomura, Wells Fargo. So what happened is around March 12th, Chinese government gave a ultimatum to all these tech companies to uh, give the data to them around March 12th, 2021. So what happened is these uh, attempts and buy to all the Chinese internet stocks, all of them were fined around the $75,000 each. Some 16 companies were fined for $75,000 each, which is like a cheap change, right? For a company that is a billion dollar company, um, say for example, you have um, thousand units, right? You are asked to pay one 
point one, point one of that unit is like nothing for them. So seventy-seven thousand dollars was fined for each of these sixteen companies. That triggered something called risk management. What is risk management? You got credit risk, you got market risk, you got sovereign risk. So when someone is putting taxes, then a tick box happens. Someone is increasing the taxes. Someone is trying to. Uh, someone has got some notice from government. All these are sovereign risks. That is the highest form of risk which all companies have to mitigate. Okay. So in the same land, what uh, land? What happened was the SEC had said that for all the Chinese companies, we want to audit you. We want to look into your numbers. We want to look into everything. And if you don't give, you will be thrown out of the US. So there was some this attack happening between two big countries. One is China and one is US. In between, this uh, hedge fund or the index was stuck. So all these companies that were there started saying, okay, okay I need to figure out how much leverage this guy has so that I can um, mitigate the risk that is called credit risk. Because the sovereign is putting, there are two sovereigns that have initiated a action on a, a particular set of stocks. Immediately, the risk mitigation will start happening. So how much does the guy have? How much does he own? How much does he have to pay? So it came out, um, according to Don Morris in CNBC, what happened was Credit Suisse started uh, doing, the, every, every company, every bank has to do this risk management. Okay. So when this risk management happened, then Credit Suisse was the first uh, company that came out and said, hey, man, this guy has 20 leverage with us. What we need to do? And all the f uh, five guys, right? Um, Goldman, Morgan, Credit Suisse, uh, Nomura, Wells Fargo, all of them came together and said, okay, uh, let's liquidate the position um, so that the leverage can come down. If they did that in a very small fashion, then the storm wouldn't have happened. So in between, there is another law that says that a person a private entity cannot hold more than 10% of the stock. When Archivos Capital used the uh, prime brokerages to buy a lot of stock, it increased more than 10%. So obviously, the selling has to happen. So whether the selling has to go very slowly in a controlled fashion or not was what is discussed. Uh, then the next day, the selling started, and on Friday, there is something called block trades. In the dark pool, whoever is trading and whoever is buying, nobody knows. This we know. That's the main purpose of a dark pool. So instead of buying just one trade or two, uh, one stock or two stock or three stock, three units of one stock, what they say is, okay, I am giving you one million stock as one uh, unit. So you have to buy all that one million at the same time. So like that, Goldman created 50 million uh, worth of single units of these indexes, which have all the uh, stocks of Tencent, Viacom, and all those. Or in, uh, individually, Viacom, all these uh, individual stocks, they give 50 million, 10, uh, 100, 100 million, 50 million block trades to each is these in the dark pool. So people who bought it thought that, okay, we are uh, getting it. The first, it will go, okay, uh, uh, nobody notices. But when people keep on selling, right, then the trigger starts. So a lot of people, um, as the day started, a lot of people thought that it was another common uh, insider guy who is selling it. 
for paying taxes or anything. in fact motley fool already said that okay there is nothing wrong with the companies maybe someone is trying to sell the stock for paying tax or something so uh, people started thinking okay maybe that was the case but as soon as the total trade started happen 55 billion dollar worth of stock has been sold within 2 or 3 hours within 3 hours stock started coming down like this right in one day 15% of the company shares vanished 15% 20% 25% the wirecom stock was around 95 and by the time in 3 days first day 35 billion second day 20 billion third day 15 billion like that the sale happened by the time the whole sale uh, the unwound things the 85 95 dollar stock became 35 dollar stock 40 dollar stock so that is what has happened like you you wouldn't imagine this uh there cannot be more better script for any movie guy than this so all these banks put together thought they they will sell it very less and less and suddenly the banks go to their uh, uh you know trading floor and says dump sell it all sell everything you have whatever you can sell 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 and therefore the unwinding started happening within hours i should say within hours the 10 billion vanished like anything of archigos capital now this guy is now broke 200 million he went to the level of 10 billion now that particular fund is zero zero that is what happened in two days 10 billion to zero in two days zero in two days so i hope you uh, have learned something with this and uh, usually the synthetic stocks are not bad they're good but uh, the total return swaps and uh, other things you know in financial domain it is called the quick ratio if everything happens to you suddenly what do you do is what uh, we all should know uh, i hope uh, we will listen about more about these articles capital and other restrictions i think now there will be a law that says regardless of whether you are private uh, securities or anything you should give us the report every quarterly or all people should give all the reports uh, once they cross a particular maybe i don't know i'm just speculating but uh, uh, this is one such thing so in span of just 3 months like january to april we saw game stop come from 10 billion to zero second one uh, is the viacom tencent tiger uh, man index tiger index that uh, articles capital index that came from 10 billion to zero so i don't know how many hedge funds are in the line again so people who are actually looking into this uh, thing are now saying that what next there are so many big companies that have become like eight per eight times nine times 10 times who is behind all this nobody knows and uh, i'm sure there is going to be more and more uh things uh, that will be unveiling um so look forward and uh, hope you enjoy um next week we'll talk about uh, something more interesting thank you and you have a wonderful day Thank you. Bye.